Bring in the Truth Ministries. Presents. Discerning the Jezebel Spirit. The Jezebel spirit is born out of witchcraft and rebellion and is one of the most common spirits in operation today. It is a powerful enemy of the body of Christ, the church. It operates freely on even sincere believers whose hearts are for God individually and has also attained positions of power within churches. In the secular world, these people are often thought to suffer from narcissistic personality disorder, paranoia, and are often labeled as psychopaths or just plain nasty, arrogant, or even plain evil. Yet the most accurate and complete description of the characteristics of these people is to be found within a spiritual context. This particular spirit, though only one of many malicious spirits, establishes its stronghold primarily in women. However, many men have been victimized by it as well where it functions as a controlling spirit. In the wake of every person controlled by the Jezebel spirit is a life of chaos, confusion, instability, broken relationships, and destruction. Every person that ever came into close contact with it has seen aggressive attempts to divide their relationships with their loved ones. While Jezebel's belief system is incorrect, they are very firmly held beliefs. Jezebels are usually people of deep convictions. As mentioned, many people controlled by the Jezebel spirit have a true heart for God and earnestly desire to serve him. The original Jezebel, the spirit's first noteworthy victim, Queen of Israel, was devotedly religious, but was at total enmity with God. She worshiped at the altar of Baal, worship of the flesh. Modern day Jezebels may indeed believe they are serving the one true God. However, the true hidden agenda is self-worship. As Fushia Pickett points out in her book, The Next Move of God, the Jezebel spirit's mission is to kill the prophets, as it tried and often has throughout time. The goal of the victim is usually quite different, to gain identity, glory, recognition, power, and satisfy the need for acknowledgement and worth from others. In other words, the praise of men. Matthew chapter 6, 2, 5, and 16. This is an outgrowth of desire for love and self-worth we all have with the wrong focus, self. As a secondary mission, the Jezebel spirit seeks to emasculate all men or divest them of their authority and power over others. 
It fosters a distrust and or hatred of men in general and nurtures motives of vengeance in the victim towards some men in particular, usually as a result of abuse or neglect by a significant male in the victim's life. We attach a female gender to this spirit, but really it has no gender. It is a sea thing, terribly aggressive, very determined, callous, controlling, narcissistic, power hungry, manipulative, unrepentant, deceitful, and overwhelmingly evil spirit. And those are mostly only its good points. This spirit is definitely Satan's woman. Probably most deceiving to many is that Jezebel was religious and did religious things. She was the daughter of Ethabel, meaning with Baal. She converted her husband Ahab to follow Baal. Ahab married her against God's command. The name Jezebel specifically means without dwelling or habitation. A true explanation of Jezebel can clearly be described as the worship of self. The clear battle with the Jezebel spirit is over people. In the church, that spirit desires to rule and control the people of God. If we are not people of decision, we will fall under the spell of the Jezebel spirit. She is a supporter of and heavily influential in religious organizations as well as politics. While Jezebel is religious, she wells her false power against the true prophetic flow of God. She hates the prophets and all prophetic ministries. Specifically, she hates repentance, humility, and intercessory prayer because they destroy her strongholds of stubbornness and pride. Jezebel's love to project a sense of power they do not have. It is based on intimidation in order to cloud the minds of those they desire to oppress. How frequently that spirit tries to wield influence in the church, in spiritual organizations? If you don't see it my way, I will just pull out and you can't deal without me and all the work I prepared, I will keep. Yes, if one does not go along with his or her actions, there will be consequences. Intimidation always seek to move the person through threats. This use of fear puts the victim under control out of fear of losing something precious to him. This is blackmail, ladies and gentlemen, and far from God's love, because these are all improper channels, use of illegitimate power and authority, projection of power that is not ours to use. This by no means insinuates that a person shouldn't stand up for himself, but rather that it should be done through proper channels. Manipulating, intimidating, and dominating another human being are blatant uses of control and illegitimate authority. Jezebel uses other people as objects where it suits her need to gain control, influence, and power. Once she has gained the control desired, she generally rejects and tosses the people aside. If they are in her family, she does this emotionally. Discerning the Jezebel Spirit. Jezebel displays angry, vicious, and sometimes violent behavior when opposed. She will turn on the one who refuses to do her will or submit to her, especially if she has been successful in manipulating this person in the past, frequently with vicious, berating verbal attacks aimed at humiliation. The emotional damage caused by these outbreaks can be devastating to the one at whom she directed her wrath. 
This is often the source of terrible emotional wounds for her children and spouse. When this angry behavior happens in public, it often exposes the true spirit in operation to others who may have been previously deceived. No is the operative word for Jezebel. When those in spiritual authority say no to her, she is ready for war. Remember, Jezebel is a warring spirit who is always dressed for battle. Have you ever felt insecure? Be careful. Jezebel loves to flow in the realm of insecurity. In addition to destroying those around her, Jezebel especially hates the victim she is controlling. Remember, the mission of Jezebel to kill the prophets. The victim is often herself anointed of God to be prophetic and will ultimately cause her victim to self-destruct. This is the Black Widow Spider Syndrome of the Jezebel spirit. Black Widow Spiders kill their mates. In the spirit realm, there are two implications. One, the Jezebel seeks to kill the male authority figure or prophet and two, she seeks to kill her victim, which is made it to her when Jezebel takes control of their life. Jezebel's rival authority, which means to despise or show no respect for it, building on fear of authority, especially since men are frequently the authority figures who originally hurt them, coupled with rebellion, she hates anyone placed in authority over her and seeks to destroy them and take their power. An early manifestation in childhood is a lack of respect for self or others and no respect for positions either theirs or others. Jezebel is a classic backstabber. She will smile at you, give you a hug and a kiss, and then, as soon as you turn around, stab you in the back, repeatedly, with vigor enjoying every wound she inflicts. She is a most vicious and devious spirit. Beware. Control and manipulation are the strongest parts of the Jezebel nature. These are the spirits of witchcraft and are extremely dangerous. Nearly everything that Jezebel does utilizes one or both spirits to attain her goal. Jezebel is the ultimate manipulator and nobody is better at manipulation than the person, victim, being controlled by this spirit. But Jezebel cannot control you until she first seduces you. Beware of flattery, smooth prophetic sayings, and seducing tears from this spirit. Jezebel loves false spiritual government. She knows how to create, flow, and operate in it. She views children as tools and weapons to manipulate your heart to advance her goals. Jezebel is like a shark. She is most vicious and dangerous. She circles the lives of others looking for teachable, seducible, controllable disciples of her own. Jezebel likes to birth spiritual children of her own as she looks for disciples to eat from her own table. She will look for those that are in rebellion, who are weak, wounded, or those who are contending and fighting spiritual authority. She knows how to use deep emotional hurts and wounds to manipulate and control as she creates soul ties with you. Jezebel loves to pull people under herself and away from those who can truly speak into their lives. Jezebel knows how to stir you up because she flows best in whirlwind of confusion and turmoil. She probes your soul, looking for your weaknesses. She is expert at developing soul ties and often does so. As previously mentioned, Jezebel will use any tool available to manipulate those around her to do her will. She often uses fear to manipulate people into submission. Jezebel is very possessive and domineering. She wants to control you. Jezebel loves power. Give me, give me, give me. You see, money 
is not really the issue with this spirit. It's power and authority that she's after. She likes to be in control of your life because she draws her strength from controlling you. That's why you feel spiritually drained after contending with her. The Jezebel principality wants to control you. She uses self-pity and her own weaknesses to manipulate another into submitting to her out of compassion or pity. She will even use prayer to manipulate the one she is attempting to control, especially prayers prayed audibly over that person to create the illusion that doing Jezebel's will is actually obeying God, or to generate fear or other emotion within the person which the Jezebel can use for the manipulation. Even though often powerfully gifted of the Lord, the Jezebel will frequently operate in the false discernment of the enemy by speaking words of knowledge gained from familiar spirits and not from the Spirit of God. This is witchcraft. The power of witchcraft is derived from Satan himself. Every attempt at manipulation or control sells out more to Satan and strengthens the deception that Jezebel is under. If you get between Jezebel and the person she is trying to control, she'll attack you viciously, trying her best to destroy your relationship with that person. She will try and destroy your reputation, set you up, and to separate you from her victim. Jezebels are attracted to people of power like moths to a flame. She'll connect herself with presidents, people in the media, people who have money, people of power. Often, a very intelligent, efficient, attractive, and even blatant Jezebel can be found serving at the feet of prominent leaders, even in the church. The deception and or seduction of the Jezebel is often so successful that the leader does not recognize who is at his right hand. The Jezebel's true desire is to risk the power from the person being served. If that person is prophetic in nature, the actual mission is to destroy them by any means available. Destroy their credibility, undermine their authority, discredit their ministry, cause them to fall in sexual temptation, etc. The Jezebel is extremely bossy by nature, though subtly with the low profile type. She is easily offended if her authority is questioned and will often respond with extreme anger at even the slightest offense. Discerning the Jezebel Spirit. Two things have always plagued the church, control and desire to dominate. This power struggle has always divided and short-circuited the power of the church. The most cunning and yet most common way the spirit of Jezebel controls and operates is through manipulation. Manipulation is used in several ways, such as flattery, self-pity, hinting for something, etc. The use of manipulation to extract money is also used to fulfill one's own purpose. Ammunition too is another issue. Jezebels are continually collecting ammunition. They acquire information that they can use against you in case they ever begin to lose their grip of power. All of what they collected they would use against you without mercy and give it to others so that they can exploit it in the public to give you a bad self-image. Jezebels demand worship from others, the Queen Bee Syndrome. She must have dominance and control in her home, 
other family members must exist to please her. For example, people that carry the Jezebel spirit are looking for people to basically praise them, to always be in support of what they're doing, to always be at their beck and call, to always be the yes man when they need something. You can't say no to this spirit. If you say no to Jezebel, there will be a major problem. So anytime the spirit of Jezebel is around, she will always want people to surround her with praise and attention that keeps her lifted at the forefront of everyone's mind. Many times the ones that carry the Jezebel spirit talk non-stop. They have a need to feel power and authority and they will do anything to achieve it. They feel they know more than anyone, therefore they dominate all conversations. Jezebel used talking as a form of control. In a typical conversation, he or she does all the talking, whether it is about sports, the weather, or the kingdom of God. Because of this form of control, he or she is unable to receive input from anyone in his life. All conversations with him is one-sided. You are doing the listening. And if ever there is a break and you want to say something, the Jezebel switches off and does not hear you. One of its slay ways to slip away once confronted is to try to confuse you by changing the subject five times in one minute. Confusion keeps them undiscovered and unexposed. Therefore, it is impossible to converse with a Jezebel in logic. They would write several pages dealing with all sorts of other situations than the one you are confronting them with. The context would be so vague that no one would understand head or tails. If it is in conversation, they would simply talk nonsense to dilute and confuse you, never responding to your question. In this situation, one has to repeat the question and ask them only to respond to that question. They never do. They never will. This is very important for Christians to understand because when dealing with and confronting a person who carry the spirit of Jezebel, they will always run from questions. Jezebel is a master of criticism, murmuring, and complaining. Often those whom she is at enmity with are deliberately cursed in a conscious effort to punish and bring them back in line, to bring them back under her control. Jezebel firmly believes she has right on her side in doing these things and displays vicious and callous disregard for the well-being and independence of others having convinced herself that it is ultimately for their good as well as that she knows best and really has their best interest at heart in doing so. Those people who have been on the receiving side of Jezebel's curse feel the anger and the viciousness of her curses acutely and mainly succumb to them. However, for those under the protection of the cross, these curses are most often transformed into blessings instead, leaving the Jezebel sapped of emotional energy, frustrated, confused, and completely defeated, wondering what went wrong. The Jezebel spirit actually hates and shuns repentance and humility. Because the Jezebel spirit is prideful and rebellious, she hates repentance and humility. These are two mighty weapons which can be used against her. This is also the key in discerning this spirit. A pride-filled, rebellious person refusing to repent has a Jezebel spirit. Is Jezebel a spirit or a work of the flesh? Simply put, Jezebel is a spirit, but it has found access through uncrucified flesh. You will never have a person with a controlling spirit admit he is wrong. It is always the fault of someone else. If you insist on an apology and confront the controller, you will probably get a screaming response such as, Yes, I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. This sarcastic spewing is a long way from repentance. 
Her expectations of others are always unrealistic because others cannot meet her demand for complete submission. If they do try, she despises them and casts them aside when she has what she wants out of them. Any attempting to relate to a person with this spirit is literally in a no-win situation. Nothing pleases this spirit. Jezebel can work through friends, relatives, and very often through committed Christians, true believers. The truth is, we are all susceptible to some of these behaviors. But when you find an ingrained pattern of these behaviors, when you encounter someone who goes to extreme lengths to appear perfect, even when they are clearly not, refusing to submit to critical self-examination or be subject to criticism of friends and family, then you may as well start looking for the other telltale signs of this very dangerous spirit. When you find relationships in ruin and a trail of hurting, even traumatized people, and stubborn refusal at responsible reconciliation attempts, look a little closer. When you find antagonism that goes beyond mere annoyance or irritation, stretching to a relentless aggression as opposed to passive pursuit to break someone in order to bring them to heal, get very suspicious. When you are sent several messages bearing messages of intimidation, fear, and discouragement, with the repeated reminder that you will never hear an apology and that you will only be allowed back into the fold or their terms, know that Jezebel has sent her messengers to see you. Jezebels have a personality that has been shaped by controlling demonic thoughts. Therefore, the person must be willing to ruthlessly face truth and be willing to let God crucify his or her flesh. The flesh and its patterns must be subjected to the Holy Spirit daily in order for the person to be permanently set free from the Jezebel spirit. Discerning the Jezebel spirit. Use discernment and test the spirits. The victim controlled by the Jezebel spirit may exhibit many gifts and have a true heart for God. The reason she is a victim is that Jezebel is out to destroy her life, to kill her basically. The gifts and callings of God are given without repentance, Romans 11.29. In other words, the gifts are given by the Holy Spirit without regard to merit. You can't earn them. We are commanded to test the spirits according to 1 John 4.1, to test for Jezebel with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Remember, one, you shall know them by their fruits, Matthew 7.16, not their gifts. Two, Jezebel hates humility and repentance. She will refuse or dodge a call for either one of these to occur in her life or fake it if boxed in. She simply cannot and will not say she is sorry. And even if somehow she is forced to do so, it is very clear that she is not sorry at all. Genuine repentance and humility is easy enough to discern. Three, easily apparent in any Jezebel is complete selfishness, a total lack of empathy for others, Though at times these emotions are feigned, but it's not real concern. 4. The characteristics, personality, and methods of operation will usually manifest themselves openly at times. The seducer is often blatantly obvious to everyone except the person being seduced. Jezebel worships herself, keeps the focus on herself, except where a false attitude of compassion or humility serves her purpose. She has difficulty talking at length about anyone but herself, even when counseling others. She is very proud and often extremely vain. 
Many Jezebels are reasonably attractive and some very beautiful. However, much of the seduction and attractiveness is actually demonically derived, giving them the ability to quickly form soul ties with people and thus proceed to control them, their lives and their futures. She now lives vicariously through them, drawing their strength from them while sapping them of their strengths. Bitterness and resentment against past hurts and offenses are nurtured in the victim by the Jezebel spirit because she knows a root of bitterness will grow like a cancer and manifest itself in all sorts of physical ailments which she can use as tools of manipulation. Of course, this cancer of bitterness is also slowly destroying the victim. In many cases, the countenance of the victim gradually grows more and more unattractive, and in the end, victims controlled by the Jezebel spirit may resemble the very witch like crones often used to symbolize witchcraft, where this spirit is birthed. The victim rots from the inside out, physically and spiritually, and it shows people eventually find Jezebel's spiritual ugliness very repulsive. Many Jezebels will be drawn to the most influential Jezebel in operation. Though this is done unconsciously, it has the effect of creating a full-fledged and very effective witch's coven with a high priestess in charge with devastating results. Jezebels utilize the spirits of murmuring and complaint and criticism, which are servant spirits in her stronghold. She uses criticism of perceived faults in others to build up her own self-esteem and to justify her disobedience of or lack of respect for others. Because she tends to perfectionism, any fault she finds in others is grounds for disobeying their authority. She uses criticism as a tool to manipulate those around her and along with murmuring and complaint causes divisiveness to weaken her opposition and thereby to gain control over and to destroy them. When the Jezebel spirit is confronted with the truth, it will perceive the confronter as the enemy. Then it counterattacks with assaults against this enemy. In fact, no greater wrath seems to occur than when a controlling person is confronted. This person will never admit guilt or relinquish the sense of power and will retaliate against the confronter. Defensiveness is a common reaction when a suggestion is made. People who carry the Jezebel spirit are full of pride with a mixture of insecurity which is deep rooted as a stronghold in their mind. Carriers of this spirit cannot take correction because all correction is perceived as rejection to them. Therefore, you will never hear a person with a controlling Jezebel spirit admit he or she is wrong. It will always be the fault of someone else, never theirs. Never is there confession of guilt or true remorse. The Jezebel spirit is in contrast to the will of God. Her will, goals, and self-purposes has become her God. Her will must be accomplished regardless of the consequences and no matter who get hurt in the process. Not only did Jezebel steal authority, she manipulated those in leadership. She used lies distortions, and many other forms to get her way. The Lord waits for someone to confront those who carry the Jezebel spirit. Many succumb to the Ahab spirit and simply turn their heads from the tactics out of fear. They reason that, after all, she is very religious and popular and works hard in the church. Or, what would people think of me if I confront her? The greatest weakness among leaders today is the fear of confrontation. They want peace without paying the price of confronting the manipulating and controlling tactics of those who carry the Jezebel spirit. If you confront someone with the Jezebel spirit, they'll make accusations at you 
and call you bad names and every evil name in the book. You will see hatred like you never seen before. This will even come from people who greatly appreciate you and your calling. They will quickly make you out to be a bad guy by telling others that you're a false prophet, a false teacher, your ministry is a lie. They'll spread hate. They'll tell others, don't buy your tapes, don't buy your videos, don't even support their ministry, they're false, and convince them to not listen to anything you teach or say. People with this spirit will always act and carry themselves the same way when confronted. Sometimes carriers of the Jezebel spirit become temporarily remorseful and appear to be friendly or on your side, but soon she'll go right back to her controlling tactics the minute she or he don't get what they want. When it comes to prayer, she would be praying for her own agenda. There is no power in that. True fervent intercessory prayer causes hearts to change from pride to loftiness to repentance and humility. Nothing brings a greater death blow to the spirit of Jezebel. As it is typical of a Jezebel, she would complain that she wasn't appreciated enough to play with the emotions of others. In her self-centered nature, she would go to any lengths by lying and even exaggerating matters to make herself look spiritual and holy, super holy. After all, when being self-centered, no one is as important as they are. Jezebel's would state again and again that their decisions was the result of much prayer and fasting. She knows how to garner sympathy from others by knowing how to cry at the drop of a dime and fool almost anyone in sight. Don't let her tears fool you. They're designed to play with your emotions so that you can be on her side. She's very good at gathering people on her side to feel sorry for her. As for the Ahab spirit, it is known to abdicate his authority. It bespeaks of a mindset that avoids confrontation and denies fault. The spirit of Ahab is very weak and fearful. It loves its position, but fears confrontation. 